Hi guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a 2D character in a blank project in Unreal Engine 4. First you'll want to open up Unreal Engine and you'll want to select New Project at the top here. Then you'll want to select Blank, Desktop and Console, Maximum Quality and No Star Content. You want to select the folder you want to save it in. It can be anywhere. And you also want to set the name of the project. It could be whatever you want, but we're going to call it Character Tutorial. And we'll click Create Project. Okay, so once you've created and opened the project, you'll be created by a level that's just lighting under plane. We'll start by creating a folder. Right click and click New Folder, and we'll call it Character. Go into the Character folder, right click and click blueprint class. Here are the most common classes that people use and we'll click here at all classes and we'll type in paper character because we want a 2D character and we'll select paper character and we'll click select. We'll call the character tutorial character. Okay, We can go into this blueprint and it'll show us that there is currently no way of seeing the character as it is just a capsule component and it has no flipbook. To create a flipbook we're going to need some PNG sequences and sprites so we'll create a new folder for these animations we'll call it animations and we'll go into the animations folder and here is where we'll drag our PNG sequences and sprites. We're going to download them offline I've I will put this link in the description below and you'll need to create an account and then click free download and it should all work. Um, it will come as a zip file so make sure you extract it correctly and then you'll be greeted with a folder like this. If we go into Reaperman 1, we go to PNG, PNG sequence and then here are all the sequences such as idle, running, her. We're going to use the idle sequence so we'll go into the folder and we'll select all the PNG files and we'll drag them into the project. Once they're in the project, we will select them all by shift clicking and we'll right click, we'll sprite actions and we will apply the paper 2D texture settings. Once they're applied, we'll right click again, sprite actions and extract sprites. Now to extract the sprites, we're just going to have to click extract on each and every single one of them. Once we've extracted them all, we'll be able to create a flipbook which will be used for the animations. Okay, so now we'll right click and we'll go to Paper 2D, Paper Flipbook, and we'll call it Idle. We'll open up this Idle Flipbook and now we can see that we can right click here or we can drag in keyframes. So we're going to drag them in. We're going to control click every single sprite. The sprites are the ones with the grey and blue backgrounds. Uh, I'm going to unselect the idle flipbook as well. We're going to keep clicking them all. And then we're going to drag them to the top, to the tab, and we're going to drag them in there. And now if we zoom out, we can see the idle animations working fine. And here is every sprite as a keyframe. We can drag the keyframes to make them last a bit longer. As you can see, it pauses a little bit. Uh, but that's mainly down to you and how you want the animations to work. We're just going to leave it as it is. So we'll save it. And we'll Control shift s to save everything. And we'll go back to the project window. And we'll right click. And we'll create a new folder to tidy up the folder a little bit. And we'll call this folder Flipbooks. We'll drag in the idle flipbook. I'll move it there and we'll create another folder now and we'll call this one sprites idle and we'll drag in all the PNG images and sprites just to tidy up everything a little bit move that there once it's in the folder we'll need to do this again with a running animation so we'll go back into the extracted zip folder that we're in before and we'll need to go into the PNG sequences again and we'll go to running. Once we're in running we'll select all these uh, PNG images again, we'll drag them in. We'll shift click, select them all, we'll go into sprite actions and apply paper 2D texture settings. We're doing the exact same thing as before and now we'll extract them. And we'll click extract on every single one again. And now we'll right click uh, Pepper 2D 
Paper flip book. And we'll call this one run. And we'll open it up. And we'll need to drag in the sprites as we did just before. So we'll control click every single sprite again. And we'll unselect the flip book again. And we'll drag them into the top tab. And we'll drop them there. And now we'll see the running animation is working perfectly. So now we'll save this. Control Shift S to save everything. Now we'll go back into the project window. And we'll tidy it up again. So we'll create a new folder. We'll call this one Sprites Run. We'll drag the flipbook into the flipbooks folder. And we'll drag all the sprites and PNG images into the new folder. Once that's done, we'll want to set up the character controls. And to do that, we'll go up to the top and we'll set settings, project settings. And we'll go input on the left. And then from here, we'll go into action mappings. And we'll create an action mapping for the jump control. So we'll type jump there and we'll search the jump key. And because I'm going to use WS and D, I'm going to use the W key to jump. Okay, and now we're going to go over to Axis Mappings and create one by clicking a little plus. We'll call it Move Horizontally. And we will set the key for this to D, and this will be to move right. Now we'll add another one, and we'll set this key to A, and this will be to move left. And we will set the scale of D to 1, and the scale of A to minus 1. The reason we do this is so that for the scale of D, when we press to go right, it's 1. And when we press to go left, it's minus 1. So then we can give this scale to an add movement input so it moves us in the opposite world direction later on. We'll jump back to the project window. So now if we go into character. And we go into the viewport. We'll need to set the idle sprite and we'll click on the sprite and select the idle flipbook. And it's a bit big at the minute, so we'll lock the scale and we'll change the scale to 0.3. And now it's still a bit bigger than the capsule component, which we want it to be a similar size to. So we'll unlock the scale and we'll change the x value to 0.25. See if that works. And it's looking a bit better and it should be fine for what we're using it for so we'll leave it at that uh, we'll now want to add a camera so that we can actually see the character and we'll click enter we'll now add another component and add a spring arm and then we will want to attach the camera to the spring arm and now if we go into the spring arm settings we can change the rotation on the z-axis to 270 so that it's actually facing the front of the character um, we'll now change the target arm length to 1200 so that it's a bit further away and the character doesn't take up the whole screen so now it's a bit further away we will change the collision test to off and now we'll go into the camera settings and we'll change it from a perspective camera to an orthographic camera and this will make it look more 2D as it will flatten everything it sees. We'll change the width to 1920 to give it a HD resolution. And now we can compile this and we can go into the event graph and program the movement. We can delete all these nodes. If we right click and type move horizontally, we'll see our axis event. And then once we drag this on, we can now set the flip, flip book for when the character is moving. So if we drag off and type set flip book for the sprite. Okay, once that's in, we'll need to know what we're setting the flip book to. So we'll put a select in. We'll change it to a boolean. And depending on what that boolean is equal to is what the flip book will be set to. So we'll right click here and we'll change pin type. We'll change it to a flipbook paper flipbook and click that and then we should create a boolean from the axis value so that we know what to set it to and we'll drag off and we'll put equal to and we'll see if it's equal to zero that means the character should not be moving and it's not receiving a movement input so then if it's true we will select the 
idle flipbook and then if it's false we'll select the run flipbook and then now we'll add a movement input so that the character actually moves and we'll set the world direction to one and we'll set the scale value equal to the axis value and because it's equal to the axis value when it's minus one when you press the a key to move left it will move in the opposite world direction so it'll be moving left we'll clean this up a bit by double clicking and dragging this away because we'll be using it later um, we'll now need to set the relative rotation of the sprite so we'll add a branch and this branch will be checking if the axis value is not equal to zero so that we know that the character is moving we'll then set the relative rotation of the sprite so that the sprite will be facing whatever way the character is moving now we'll need to create the boolean for the branch so we'll get the axis value again if we zoom out a bit there we go we'll get it from the part we created earlier we'll then type float not equal and we will drag that into the branch so that if the axis value is not equal to zero we'll set the relative rotation we'll double click again and then we'll add a new boolean from this we'll drag off it and we'll put float greater than and then we'll check if it's greater than zero and we'll go into a select and we'll change the pin type to a rotator and if it's greater than zero then it will not rotate and if it is not greater than zero it will rotate so we'll change that the z axis to 180 so it does one half of a full rotation so that's all the horizontal movement set up so now we'll do the jump right click type jump and action event jump and then we'll drag off pressed and we'll get the jump function there and this will basically be setting the character movement so if you want to change the jump height you can do that in there and that is basically all the character movement set up so we'll compile save and we'll go back into the project window we'll right click blueprint class and game mode base this is to set up a game mode we'll call this game mode tutorial game mode and then if we double click it and we set the default pawn class to tutorial character there we go Let's compile and save that and then if we go into the world settings we can game mode override with our game mode drag that in and now if we click play the character can move left and right and the character will face whatever way it's moving we can also jump and the character is moving perfectly so that's everything covered for this tutorial if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask in the comments below and have a great day guys